Good morning, everyone, and welcome as you join us this morning for our service of morning prayer. If you have a prayer book at home, you're very welcome to join, join us with that. And we're beginning on page 101. We bring the greeting, the Lord be with you. And we have a sentence of scripture from 1 Peter chapter 2. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. And in a moment together we remember before God things that have let him down. Things in our lives by thought, word and deed where we know if we bring them to God he will indeed from true confession and in spirit and in truth forgive us and restore us in the Father's eyes. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. So let us take a moment to confess our sins to God our Father. Feel free to join in the confession on page 102 if you have a prayer book. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're now going to sing our first hymn, I Know Not Why, God's Wondrous Grace.
We're now going to ask Christine to bring us our psalm today. The psalm is Psalm 130, beginning to read at the first verse. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark my iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be re revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. This is the word of the Lord. If you'd like to join us now, we look at the Jubilati on page 104 of the prayer book. And again, we'll say this right through together. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. We now have another Bible reading this time from Ezekiel, chapter 37, and reading from the first verse. These are words indeed about the valley of the dry bones, the words that came to Ezekiel the prophet. Chapter 37, beginning at verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. They were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you shall cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the beauty of it, the truth of it. We ask in this time that your Holy Spirit speak to us afresh now. May our minds and hearts be open to your voice and yours alone, to hear you and to see only you and to respond to you in the power of the Holy Spirit. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I am going to use the text of the psalm that Christine read earlier, Psalm 130. I am told that I am half deaf at times, that I don't hear things and pick up the wrong things maybe at times as well. Or perhaps it's like a lot of men, we have selective hearing. And you may have come across these words or have said them yourself. Whenever someone is not tuning in to someone else talking to them, or they hear the wrong thing, or pick it, pick it up the wrong thing, and all of a sudden they hear something derogatory about them, and they say the words, I heard that. Sometimes we wonder, where is God? It's a question that many people ask themselves in situations in life. Where is God in my trouble? and in my distress does he hear my prayer when will he answer that even if it is a yes or a no or a not yet the psalmist here in psalm 130 is in a place of darkness and distress in trouble yet he acknowledges and knows god exists he addresses him, therefore God is present. And he knows God has the capacity to hear a heart's cry. Verse 1 says these words, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. A place of despair. And the psalmist prays with a heartfelt way with all of his being, to the Lord. And we see in verse 2, as it continues, his cry, his deep cry, continues to shout out to the Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. He prays gutturally. Have you ever heard of that word, gutturally? Something guttural is from the very depths of our being almost like we're turned inside out. There are exclamation marks here in these first two verses. We are to sit up and listen to them. But note in these verses, the psalmist does not believe that God might not hear, but he has an expectancy that God will hear. As he acknowledges in those words, God has ears. Therefore must hear my cry. Verses 3 and 4 continue. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. This speaks of a relationship with God. The sense that Jesus Christ, many centuries later, God incarnate came to earth to die for our sins. That they can be taken away. That the gifts of salvation and eternal life can be given to all who trust in him. Such is the Father's love to send his Son to die for you and me. And to open the door to a relationship with this creator, this almighty God. Not a God distant and far off but a God imminent, a God with us always. And here our relationship grows and builds. And the psalmist knows it too. Where there is forgiveness and with you, there is forgiveness through the Lord. Prayer is a relational add-on to that relationship. If we have a relationship with someone in this world, 
We talk to them. We don't just say a few words and that's it, maybe for a long, long time again. If we're in a relationship with someone, we talk to them. And prayer is simply talk between ourselves and our Heavenly Father. And remember, He talks back. So are our ears open to hear His voice? When we're in a relationship with the Lord, it should be second nature to pray. It's not easy, but it should be second nature. Our hearts cry to the Lord in prayer, both in the good and in the more difficult. There is a strength with this in times of trouble and distress. Not only when we pray in those times, but particularly they are words and strength of comfort to us in times of trouble and distress. As the old hymn writer put it, we commune as friend with friend. Jesus, when we are in relationship with him, is our friend. We commune as friend with friend. Many of us have found in these difficult days, as we go to a shop or someone goes to a shop for us, there is waiting. Some people cannot get through the door at certain times because there's a certain number of people in the shop. You'll find maybe our lines drawn in the shop and we have to wait our turn to do our shopping. And as human beings, we are not natural waiters. We're people who are not very good at waiting. Verses 5 and 6 draw this out. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. The no, the not yet, or the yes in our prayer life may be all a part of waiting for those answers. We might get them in our time or how we want them to happen. The Lord does them in his time. And in here we see, in his word, I hope. In his word, I hope. Immerse yourself in God's word if you're not already doing that. When we follow the Lord, it is natural to read his word, to immerse ourselves in it, to live by it, by his strength. Because we learn about the Lord through the Bible. This is how we know his promises, his truth, and what he has done for us and will continue to do as well. Reading God's word and the hope that it brings is relational as well. If we have salvation and trust through the Lord Jesus Christ, we naturally should read his word. And note the double emphasis in verse 6. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. Watchmen ended their watch when daylight came. That was their hope. Their hope that light would come up and they would be off their work for another few hours. Is God our lifeline? Do we have hope in him? Do we know that the light of salvation will come to us when we have a relationship with him? And in trouble and distress, it will end one day. This world is full of it. One day it will end. And the glory of the Lord is revealed in the fullness of his kingdom. And I hope and pray that we are all part of that. Finally, verse 7 of Psalm 130. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love. And with him is plentiful redemption. We can trust our Heavenly Father. He will carry us. He is ever present, ever hearing. Steadfast love, it mentions in there. That's unconditional to you and me. But we must receive it for ourselves to know it and to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Unconditional love, steadfast love. And in him is plentiful redemption. Redemption for ourselves through Christ, but also from the troubles and distresses and the worries of this world as well.
one day they will end. I want to draw the word hope out. It's mentioned twice in the text. First of all, hope in his word. Stand strong, immerse yourself in God's word. The truth and promises contained therein. He is with us always. He will hear the cry of our heart. It is promised. And he will deal as he sees fit where we find ourselves today. Remember, he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Cares for us through all. Stand strong in hope in his word. And the other hope is hope in the Lord himself. Stand strong in relationship with him. And may the Lord indeed bless us, keep us safe in these difficult days. Remember, cry out in prayer. Make the Lord indeed your saviour. Prayer comes naturally in a flowing relationship with him. And he hears everything from our heart. He wants to hear our distresses, our worries, our fears. He wants us to cry out for others as well. He wants us to hope in his word, which comes as a natural extension of a relationship with him. My prayer indeed, indeed for our land and our world at this time is, that as we cry out to the Lord, he does hear our prayer. We leave it in his hands. We pray for his healing for ourselves, physically and spiritually, and emotionally as well. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. We'll now say together the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found on page 112 of your prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will now say the collect for the fifth Sunday in Lent. We beseech thee, Almighty God, look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants, and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty, to be our defence against all our enemies, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father God, we pray for your church all over the world. As doors have been closed to the buildings at this time of pandemic, help us to find new and creative ways to come together in meeting to worship you. Don't let our efforts be in vain but use them to help us reach the unchurched and those who don't want to be churched, as well as our regular attenders who look forward to fellowshipping together each week. It is clear in all that is happening that the world needs you now more than ever. 
Lord, so many people have turned their backs on you or refused to acknowledge that you even exist. For those who love you, this crushes our hearts. You are an amazing God and we love you. The world you created is damaged and hurting. It has been destroyed by selfish greed and sinful souls. Forgive our neglect and ignorance, Lord. Only you can unite us in love and peace and heal our nation. We pray for our communities, God, in a time of so much uncertainty and fear. Help us to love our neighbour and be there for each other by whatever means we can. Whether we are eight or eighty, outgoing or introvert, rich or poor, we can all struggle with loneliness, fear, sickness and lack. Help us to reach out for support when we need it and to offer it where we see the need. No one in our lifetime has ever experienced anything quite like what we are seeing at present. And it brings through a lot of emotions. Help us to take one day at a time. In particular, we think of our medical staff at this time, who are risking their lives on a daily basis, caring for those stricken by this deadly virus. Protect them, strengthen them and give them courage to deal with what they face each day. May they see their worth and realise our appreciation of each one of their efforts. For all those who have decisions to make in our countries for our safety and survival, guide their leadership. For the workers who still have jobs to do so, that we have provision for all our needs, keep them safe from any effects of illness or contagion. We remember those who are elderly or frail, sick in hospital, care or at home. Cover them with your healing hands and give them peace. For those who are mourning, wrap your arms around them and comfort their soul. Lord, in this time of great worry, cover us in your blood and put a hedge of protection around us and those we love. Help us to fix our focus on you, our God and our Redeemer. Amen. We're now going to stand and sing again. What a friend we have in Jesus. Wonderful words of hope and strength as well. And the mention indeed of prayer so much in that hymn. Many prayers are going out around the world today in our situation. Keep crying out to the Lord. Keep crying out to him. He will hear. And may indeed our lives follow him in relationship, a saving relationship with him, and indeed commune as friend with friend. What a friend we have in Jesus.
and we finish with a blessing together. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen.